Rotary Club of Highlands, thank you so much for having me on your platform and the opportunity to speak to you about matters that are very dear to my heart. My name is Chinesai Mangoma. I am the founder of Chinesai Africa. So by background and profession, I am a lawyer, but I have dedicated my life and my resources and skills to working in the creative sector with many other collaborators towards building systems and processes towards building sustainable businesses that will increase and improve livelihoods of the creatives in the creative sector. So I'm very excited to be here. I generally would be known as the unconventional career seeker, which is something that we could talk about on another day. But I believe that most of our careers, most of our skill sets, most of our talents can be harnessed in a way that will help solve some of Africa's pressing problems. Until we get to the point where a lawyer is not just a lawyer and a doctor is not just a doctor and an engineer is not just an engineer, our society will still be plagued by some of the biggest problems that we are sitting and able to solve. So this is my, con my contribution to unconventional career seeking. It's been quite a journey, very difficult in part because there is no model, there is no prototype, there is no end of month, you're going to earn a salary from this. There is consistent hard work, pivoting, reinventing, and a thirst to solve the problem for small scale creative traders so that they can create legacy businesses. So in a nutshell, that is the work that I do. And I certainly invite others to follow my pages on www.chinasaiafrica.com. I am on all platforms, Instagram, Twitter, as Chinasai Africa. And on LinkedIn, you'll find my profile as Noreen Chinasai Mukwara Mangoma. So I am very happy to be here, as I've already said. Thank you so much to my mama Toshaya for inviting me. It is truly, truly exciting to, to speak to change makers, to speak to people who have submitted their time to creating better lives for others. So I think I am in the right room. I will speak on a topic called, or entitled rather, Zimbabwe needs you. In the bigger context, I would say the world needs you. But for today, I want to speak particularly about Zimbabwe needs you, the case for you to bring yourself to the table, the case for you to bring your skills to the table, the case for you to bring everything you have, your energy, your resources to the table. So no, this is not the case for you to wake up and go to work and clock out at 5 p.m. and go back home. This is the case for you to make a difference using your resources and skills. Zimbabwe needs you. Thank you very much. Zimbabwe needs you. What do I ever mean by this outrageous and really kind of open-ended statement? Zimbabwe needs you. I think I'm in a very good room. I'm in a room full of people that already understand that their skills, their resources can go far more than just servicing their careers and their families. I'm in a room full of Rotarians who have dedicated their lives to improving the lives of others by volunteering in different activities. I love that, right? I do a lot, right? And people never understand that. People in some times, people are always saying to me, oh, you have your hands in so many cookie jars. And I say, yes, for as long as I have the breath in me and the resources, and the God-given skills, I have the faith that he will give me opportunity to balance it all and do for him that which his kingdom celebrates. So yes, I believe that there are 48 hours in a day, right? I believe that after I do my hard work of looking for money to contribute to my household, I believe that there is enough time for me to contribute to that extra chat that could inspire a little girl. I believe that there's enough time for me to contribute to that extra appearance that could inspire someone. I believe in this is my space of work. With different spaces, different talents, there is always a formulation of how you can contribute your pure self to the cause of improving livelihoods. Now, let me tell you a little bit about, um, about the work I do. So as a lawyer, I love the law because I believe that there is no society that will grow prosperously without meaningful systems and processes, right? The law is there to serve the people. 
As such, in my journey as a lawyer, I fell upon the love for the creative sector. And this was, I think, instilled in me because my grandmother was a creative trader. Right. So growing up in a household where we would sell at different markets and so forth, it just kind of had me intrigued that these small scale traders, these women, are they building legacy businesses? So if Mbuya passes away, my Mbuya is now late. What happens to this work that she has done for the last 40 years? So I thrust myself into the creative sector. I've built a brand, um, Chenesai brand, a clothing brand. You can find it on Instagram. You can also find it on our website. Um, and the whole idea of the brand is to celebrate um, and remember, recover, and reveal that which has sustained the African women for centuries. So this is me coming to the table because I know Zimbabwe needs me to create a better trader, to improve the life of the creative, the creative sector. I am one voice joined by many other collaborators working towards that goal, unifying the need for us to improve systems for a better society. So Zimbabwe needs you, and it would be no short outline of the topic without actually mentioning the call to action. So the call to action, what I'm calling you to do is to invite many other people to understand the cause that you are serving. To invite many other people that they can do so much more with so much less, but it can make such a huge impact. To help us and our society shy away from the idea of the single story as well explained by Chimamanda. There is a danger in the single story. We need to tell our narratives. We can only tell our narratives from a position of action. We need to find that within a society that wills us, that talks to us. We need to work on that tirelessly and work with such diligence, with such professionalism, that our community becomes the Zimbabwe that we all ambition. We, thank, we are grateful, thankful for the work of politicians in different spaces, whether it's opposition parties, whether it's the ruling parties. Everyone needs to be doing their part. Together we can build a community, but individually I just don't see how pure politics can service our communities. I don't see how pure civil work can service our communities. There is a need for all these energies to synergize. Synergize in a way that by the end of each day when you sleep, you will say, I have done for Zimbabwe all that I can do. Zimbabwe is the home, our home, the home for our children. I grew up in a Zimbabwe where I could dream. I worry that the children that we are giving birth to are not able to dream like we used to. What has happened to us? The women, the fathers, the men that went before us carved this path for us. It is now time that each and every one in this society brings to the table what they can in kind, in cash, in collaboration, but we need to come to the table. We need to be seen, we need to be heard. This is not work that is done in the shadows, this is work that is done in the light. This is why we try, but all we have is try. We can't speak about success without speaking of failure. So when I do my work, when I reach out, when I, when I spend energies doing a lot of voluntary work in different spaces, such as this talk that I am giving, I hope that the hope I have for a better Zimbabwe will be driven by every one of these 16 million plus citizens coming to the table and contributing. Contributing to the wellness of our women and girls, a topic tender to me, very, very important that girls and children go to school. We cannot have a future without education. Education is the only key. Zimbabwe needs you. And finally, my friends and colleagues, COVID-19. Zimbabwe needs you. And if there's any time that has illustrated and highlighted the importance of civil society participation towards improving livelihoods has been COVID-19. As very well said by a professor from NYU, he said, COVID-19 has not been a change agent, rather it has been an accelerant. It has accelerated what we all knew needed to happen. Whether we look at technology, whether we look at how society is engaged, 
as we consider how disenfranchised most people are in society, how we need to build inclusive society where access to, uh, to health care is a general right, where access to education is a general right, where all the, where the school systems have access to technology. Consider what's happening in the rules of Zimbabwe right now. Most children are not going to school. Most children do not have access to Google classrooms. So the reality is that we have a lot of work to do. When COVID-19 started in Zimbabwe, at Chinasai Africa, we went into overdrive on advocating for preventive measures. We understood that the state of, of our society was not such that if people got sick, we would be able to take them to hospitals. We didn't have enough infrastructure. If you looked at what was happening in New York as an isolated case study and understood that with all the infrastructure they had, they were still suffering to contain the, uh, the virus. We understood right off the get-go get that we needed to talk about preventative measures, how to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Wear non-surgical masks. We made those. We gave them away. Social distance. We talked about it. We illustrated it. And wash your hands thoroughly. In fact, I had my son do a little song about washing their hands as he was taught in preschool. So important. So when you think about the role that we could play and talk about preventative measures, talk about why it's important to prevent the spread, and when the president finally pronounced it into public policy to wear non-surgical mask, you realize that in part or in whole, anyone can contribute to making a change including you and I. Right now, COVID-19 is going to have devastating effects on how our societies will evolve. We still need to come to the table. Zimbabwe needs you. It is now the time where we create those marriages, the synergy between civil society and government. And government. We need to synergize to improve livelihoods and to build the Zimbabwe that we want. Zimbabwe needs you. Thank you so much.